I'm Tim Herrera from the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Beth Carley, who is the Teacher of the Year for the River Delta Unified School District. Well, congratulations and thanks for joining us. Thank you. Tell us about yourself, tell us where you teach, and tell us what you teach. Well, I am a fifth grade teacher and I teach in the River Delta Unified School District and I've been teaching there since 2000. Okay. Tell us about your classroom. What are some of the unique things you're doing in fifth grade these years? Um, one of the most unique aspects of my classroom is that um, we basically are completely self-contained. So I teach everything from language arts, music, art, PE, everything. We, have, um, we don't have teachers that come in anymore and, and teach that, those aspects. Another uh, thing I like to do in my classroom is incorporate a lot of uh, GLAD strategies in teaching science and social studies, and I really push for incorporating um, those studies into the curriculum and making sure that the kids get exposure to that. Because Explain I, what that is, GLAD studies. Uh, GLAD is called uh, it's Guided Language Acquisition Design, and basically it is a, uh, it's based out of Sacramento or Orange County, and it is a program that comes up with units of study in social studies or in science. And it incorporates a variety of modalities and strategies to make um, with trying to teach the high level standards. Mm -hmm. So it takes the, the high level California standards and makes it accessible to all students, whether they're second language learners or a native English speaker. And what kind of an impact have you seen that having in the classroom? I have seen a great impact in the amount of their test scores, first of all, and also just the excitement of learning. It's fun to teach in this uh, manner and the kids have a great time and they love it. And I'll never forget, I had this one student uh, say to me, he goes, oh, he goes, can we come to the carpet? Because I bring him to the carpet to, to do things in front of them. And he goes, oh, I love learning like this. <laughs> and it was just, it was a really, it was very, very cool experience to have a student say that. So now, now in River Delta, it's, it's, a, it's a smaller district, smaller schools, so you get to, to know maybe the, know the families well? Yes, absolutely. And, and how important is that relationship with the families? It's very important, and the, te the families really rely on our school to um, really protect their children. It's, you know, we really are far out there, and I think that that's one of the greatest things that we can offer our students is that level of protection. We, we are not faced with gangs or drug acti activity too much. It's more of just a really safe rural environment. And we do have language barrier issues, uh, being that we have over 80% of our students are second language learners. So that is, it is difficult to bridge that gap, but you do have parents coming on coming onto campus and we just try and keep communicating with them regularly we also bring them in and do parent trainings to teach them how to assist their children at home in the English language. So what kind of extra challenges do you have in the classroom if you have multiple uh, native languages in there? Extra challenges are the fact that you have high level standards that they are expected to learn and they will be tested on, in, at, on during the state test. And whether you are the greatest teacher of all or a beginner or whatever, trying to teach second language learners to effectively and actually have them understand the curriculum is a great challenge. And you have to really make sure you utilize a lot of different teaching modalities to reach those students and make sure that they are learning and have repeated exposure to those standards. It's not like I can just teach it one time and then move on and say, well, I've taught it, I'm done. You actually have to revisit it and practice it. And I think that that's overall effective teaching practice for, for children in general. So what do you have to do to motivate those, those students who are a little bit further behind the curve uh, and having trouble? What I do is I build a trust relationship with them and I really try, I really let the kids know that I care about them. I care about their education. I want to see them be successful and I think deep down inside we have children coming with such great baggage that when they have somebody that's stable and that cares about them, they want to be successful. They want to learn. And so one way I have found that I can reach kids is by letting them know I really do care. I'm not just saying it, I really care about them. And so they're motivated to learn. They want to do well. They want to go to college. And they have really, they start internalizing these high expectations that I have for them into themselves. So how long have you been teaching now? This is my 15th year. Okay, so in that amount of time, from when you started to now, what are some of the biggest changes you've seen? 
in teaching? Right when I, uh, pretty close to when I started teaching was the focus on standards. And while I highly agree, I think standards are amazing. I think that they have set the bar very high. One of the challenges that we face is the account of um, measuring the student's success with the standards. I feel like it is a challenge if you have students that are uh, second language learners being compared to their English only peers, I feel like it's sometimes apples and oranges. So I think that um, having standards is amazing. It has increased the level of, and expectation of the teaching profession. But I do think we need to maybe uh, filter in a way to analyze our test scores a little bit better so that it doesn't look like schools are failing because they have second language learners. You know, people need that time to acquire the language. And so I, I don't have a solution for it, but it's definitely a really great challenge in the fact that most of our students are second language learners. And so you're not only dealing with students who are with different languages, but they're learning uh, at different paces. Yes. And so, but then you test them all at the same time each yes. year to see what they know. Yes. So. And two weeks out of a whole year yeah. is quite a small window. So. It's, it's something that has always been a um, personal dilemma for me. And how do I, how, I know I'm meeting their needs, I know I'm teaching the standards, I know that they're learning them, but when you give them that test and it's that one moment, there's so many different factors that, that factor into that situation that it's very difficult to yeah. measure their success. Right, it doesn't necessarily dictate what the child knows. Correct. And so how do you, how do you explain that to the parents? You, you know, I don't have a lot of parents questioning, questioning it. They basically really want to know, what can I do to make, help my son or daughter? What, can, what, what do they need to focus on? So it's not like they're coming and saying, why, why, why are these test scores this way? They're coming and saying, what can I do? Mm -hmm. And I think that that's an amazing support of the educational system for the, our families. So 15 years in, in the classroom, what inspired you to be a teacher? I have never known anything different, and I, my mom was a teacher, and uh, eventually became an administrator, and she, I always played in her classroom, and I would be up at the board, and I, you know, writing and pretending like I'm teaching, and then I went to college, and I entered college as a liberal studies major, I finished, I went straight through the credential program, there was never once anything else that I wanted to do, it was, it was just, it was, that was it. So if I were to ask you if there was someone in your past that inspired you the most to be a teacher, would it be your mom? Absolutely. Absolutely. She's a remarkable woman. She uh, went on to become an, an effective administrator and um, I just, I look up to her so much. I, we still have a lot of teacher talk mm -hmm. in, still occurring, so I turn to her often um, for feedback and things like that and I really look up to her and I think she's a remarkable smart woman. So what would you say to that person who's, who's considering teaching as a profession? What kind of a sales pitch would you give to inspire that person? I think that is a very uh, challenging thing. If you have to talk somebody into it, mm -hmm. I don't think they belong there. Um, I think that either you have it in you and you are inspired to be this, and, and that's the kind of person you want in the classroom. You're not going to get a huge amount of uh, financial reward from education. You have to go in it because this is, you get to create your own life every day with a group of people. And you get to, every day you go in and you get to motivate and challenge and question and, and teach kids. And so if that fits your persona, that's the person you are and that's what makes you happy, then th there's really no question. I mean, it's, it's where you belong. Mm. So how do you feel about being named a Teacher of the Year? Quite humbled. Um, unexpected. I uh, feel very honored. I, I work with so many fantastic teachers. I think I wish that there was a way to honor every person and uh, take that moment for them to shine. And I'm very, very happy and grateful uh, for this opportunity. And I've learned a lot through the process of the application and, and my reflections on um, my, you know, my beliefs of education. Well, hopefully another 15 or 20 years ahead of you too, right? Yes. All right. Well, I'm back. I'm in an administrative program right now for, for my master's, so, so I'm I'm not leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Continuing well, I'm, on. I'm, I know your school district is glad about that. Yes. Well, thanks for joining us. We've been speaking with Beth Carley, who is the uh, Teacher of the Year for the River Delta Unified School District. Congratulations. Thank you.